Hi there, Matt Barker here again. This is the I Want a Pony demo. We're up to the part of the tutorial where we're going to build this from scratch. So we're going to go through these steps to render out our pony scene. So here we go. First step, we're going to create the pony. So come to help, I Want a Pony. And you'll see that this node sticks to your mouse. Place that down and we've got our pony node there. We can double click on that and double click on root and it will expand everything. Be careful double clicking on root in large scenes otherwise that may take a very long time to display it all. You can always hit this button here if you want to cancel loading a large scene. So next step is to create a camera. So the node for that is a camera create node. Moving along, middle mouse to pan across the canvas, we're going to create uh, some a ground plane for the pony to stand on. Primitive create is the node we need for that. And the next, we're going to create all the nodes, then we'll go back through and set the parameters for each one. Press tab and I'm going to create a material, the very basic type of material node. That lets us access access the basic materials on any renderer we have installed for Katana. Okay, so I'm going to merge all these together, select them all. Whoops, the UI is very customizable. <laughs> select them all and press M, merge them together. Okay, so with them all merged together, you'll see we have the pony camera the primitive create and the material. So before we move on down the chain to material assigns, we need to come along to uh, these nodes and do some settings. So the pony is fine as it is. The camera, if we press E on these nodes, uh, it will put it in editable mode and we can see the parameters that we're working with. So we can set things like the field of view, We're currently viewing from the perspective shape node, so we can change that uh, once we're viewing from the merge node. So if we tap V down here, you'll see that a little sphere appears here. We've also got a camera in this list now. Camera. Uh, that's black because we need to move it out from the origin. Okay. So the, and you, yeah, you'll see the field of view will, will adjust and update now. The primitive create node at the moment has just created a sphere here for us, uh, but we can come into the, if we press E, and select what type of uh, object we would like. Polyplane is what we want for today. And I'm gonna scale that up, press E, and scale that up in scene. Make a ground plane for us. Okay, so, Next step is to just start, maybe name a few things. So this is my ground plane node now. Uh, and you'll see in the list here, it's creating uh, root world geo, and then we've got pony and primitive in there. So I'm gonna change primitive to ground plane. There we go. Okay, our material, uh, have a naming convention in there. Um, the pony, yeah, pony underscore geo, there we go, and the material, okay, so how the material works is we need to add a shader to it. This is a katana node, but everything inside of this node will be proprietary to the given renderer, um, so we need to add shaders inside it, so if that made no sense, it, it will soon. Uh, if I click add shader, I can select from a large selection of things depending on what we're doing, but BXDF is the one we want now. So that, this gives us a PR, PR man, this is render man 21 I have here. Um, and I can click down and choose Pixar surface, but here's all the normal render man shaders. I'm going to use a Pixar surface, and now when I tab this down, you'll see uh, similar sort of attributes that you'll have for the same sort of attributes you have on a PXR surface in any app that supports RenderMan 21. 
So I've gone full screen on this node by tapping spacebar. You can do that with all of the nodes. Very handy for on a single screen. So for this, um, I'm going to call it pony shader and just give it a color at the moment so we know it's working. I'm gonna have a nice blue pony um, that's a bit shiny, why not? Click on face color, we've got a, a UI here that we can choose our color and spacebar out of that. So the name of it, I'm gonna call this pony material and some nodes will actually name the node name based on here, so it'll sync that all up for you. Okay, so now we're viewing, if we double click from the merge node, we'll see that we have pony mat, we have a camera, we have all the things we need in the scene now. So we are up to material assigns. So when we create a material, we can have hundreds of materials uh, created in the, in the scene, but then we need a way to tell Katana which objects get that material applied to them. And so this is in a real procedural sort of sense. So we, we can set this up so uh, no matter what happens to this pony, as long as it's named the same, uh, it'll if it turns into an army of ponies in the same folder, it can still get the same material applied. Um, or yeah, lots of things can change, or if it gets rigged and animated, the, all those materials will just stay stuck onto it. It's one of the big benefits from uh, of Katana, is that we can just have things not sort of detached when we update the scene. Um, the pony material assign, so how this works, we need to learn a little bit about CEL. Uh, this is the language in Katana that lets us specify a scene graph location. So what we need to do with this is just two questions. Which material and what do you want me to apply it to? So first, the CEL, we can choose whether to have a path, a collection, or a custom CEL assignment. With a path, it's the most basic one, we can just middle mouse drag from the scene graph, the pony, into here. And that one will work. If for example, the artist was to up, update this mesh in another application and change its name, however, it would lose that connection. So there's other ways we could, we could do it. If we were to use custom instead and close down this one, we could say, you can get quite specific with it. So we can middle mouse the geo folder here, but then we could go slash slash asterisk pony asterisk and now anything after the geo location in the whole scene graph that has the word pony in it will get this material put on it so a little bit a uh, little bit uh, going a little bit ahead there but it's good to show um, just some of the things you can do with cell as we go um, okay so now that is applied uh, that is done we need another one of these for the ground, and also we're going to need another material for the ground. So this is nice and easy, copy-paste works like a charm. So I'm going to merge them together, and I'm going to replace this port here with this merge node. So now we've got a material section. But I'm going to want to call this uh, ground mat. Make it a different colour. come down and copy paste our material assign. I'm just going to kiss the node onto there, so clicking on the triangle and connecting another one. Call this ground MA. Pop the ground mat onto material assign and let's change this one to ground. You can double click to select a word inside of there. There we go. Okay, so some render settings and some lighting and some rendering is next. The main node for lighting in Katana is the gaffer 3. I'm going to create one of those and place it down and connect it together into the tree. The gaffer 3 instantly adds a light slash gaffer folder, but we could easily change this just to show how we can structure the scene graph and sort of build it to your own liking. I'll just call that root world lights. 
And now anything we create in the gaffer is now put in the root world lights and that location that was there is now gone. So the scene graph uh, is a different way of working to other applications. Uh, this will change quite a lot with the using V-Ray, RenderMan, Arnold, um, but RenderMan for today, uh, you've got all the standard RenderMan lights here that work the same as, as in other applications. Just for speed in this tutorial, I'm just going to create a dome light today and place that in, and you'll see now I've got a dome light in the scene um, that we can and we can put uh, images and files on those uh, if you like to use HDR lighting and whatnot, but we'll be doing that later on in the, in the, in the series. Uh, okay, so we've got a light in the scene. Now we just need some render settings. PR man global statements I'm going to create. And a render node. So in this global statements, uh, this is just good because we've got uh, quality presets we can select. Uh, high quality intermediate or draft uh, and uh, you can dive in and, and do any number of settings so that gets quite in depth. For now we'll just leave it at default and our render. We're missing one setting though, we need the render settings script as well. So I'm going to slot that in just here pressing E on that one. This one's really important because you might have noticed that our uh, our resolution gate is square at the moment. It's because we have a setting we need to set here where we need to set it to the resolution that we're working with and we also need to tell it to adjust the screen window to match the resolution. You'll see that it's still square and this is quite confusing to new Katana users. At the moment that's because I am viewing the node graph from the GAFA 3 node where our lighting was created. So if we double click down here, you'll see that our shot is now framed differently and we need to align that up. There we go. This is more of an issue when we're creating um, cameras in Katana as opposed to bringing them in side an Alembic file. We can bring in data in many different ways we'll be covering in different tutorials. But we can start a render now. So on our render node, just double check everything's connected and then uh, we can right click and start our live rendering. It'll take a second to fire up. And the render log is really good in Katana. You'll see uh, it's, there's lots of uh, info and warnings you can do, things here. And you can uh, save and open externally. So that'll actually pop open your uh, preferred text editor and uh, show you the all the details of your render. Okay, so pressing F on your monitor will frame up your monitor and as it's a live render, that's like uh, interactive preview rendering, IPR, uh, where we can tumble around the scene. And first thing, uh, you'll probably hear my laptop wearing up, so I apologise for the fan noise there. It's rendering away. Uh, you'll see it's not actually updating my camera movements. So what we need to do with Katana to tell it that we want to use uh, scene changes in the viewport. That's what one of the buttons we can use in the scene graph. It's this row here, the blue blue little symbol there. If we come down to camera and we click on the camera it will now read our live updates in the viewport. You can see our pony there. Um, it'll catch up in a tick. Um, so the uh, the button here will send active uh, updates are only sent for included objects. So we can also um, shift click on the on a parent node and all the children will be included as well. So you can shift click on root and that will get everything, but once again in large scenes that may that may break everything doing that, so be careful. And you only want to send the renderer the changes that you're making, because it'll just everything will just work faster. So we're rendering away there and we can full screen the monitor by space barring over the word monitor. And there's our first render in Katana. Okay, there's one more node I wanted to show in the Pony demo just to finish this off. Uh, the render output define. So when we're working with rendering there's a few different ways to get our render out. 
Um, so that's a live IPR rendering over here now and you can see the materials we created are on the objects as we intended. Uh, so let's say we wanted to just get a quick render out. I'm going to press escape which will stop live rendering and you'll see in the render log here it stopped, tells you terminating, cancelled. Uh, in the UI you can come to the catalog and this will actually list every render that you've done in this session of Katana which can be really useful to switch between them. I'll just do a quick another render from a different viewport so you can see this working. I'll do a preview render this time so it's not interactive um, but it'll be full quality. So with the uh, catalog here I can actually switch back uh, to the other render while it's rendering uh, the render log will actually switch over to what it was saying in the previous render. So you can actually review your work and AMB stuff. There's, there's so much to go on about. I can do a whole video just on the, the monitor, really. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show that we can use the catalog and the monitor together to do quite a, quite a lot of stuff. If we wanted to export out uh, this file, we can just do so through the catalog where we can... Um, where we can select an image and then in file export catalog and you can go all images just locked ones or selected ones and you can choose a folder to save that out to. Um, it'll, it'll want an empty folder just a word of warning because it wants to save out all of the data from the catalog um, so you give it a give it a fresh folder each time for that one but that's just for maybe putting out a quick a quick asset so someone can do a bash comp or something like that. Uh, the proper way is with render output to fine. So coming to this we can come down and this says uh, which output are we going to save out to disk and attributes like the color space, the file extension can all be selected here and which channels that we're, we're saving if we have AOVs and stuff that, that will, will come into here. Uh, but down the bottom here is the main one we want to set is location type local. If we change that to file, we can then just give an actual location on the disk. Uh, so if I go up to demos, I'll just make a folder here, renders, and then in here I'm going to go pony uh, hash 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 dot exr. So the four hashes will give us frame padding and it will read the timeline down here so that'll end up being pony uh, uh, 0001 dot exr and when we do a render we need to do a disk render so that will the disk render will save out the file uh, in this folder in the exr format. Cool so that's the Pony uh, demo, the I want a Pony demo. So uh, connect that together, uh, get around Katana, get, get a feel of creating nodes and uh, get used to the UI. And I hope to see you in upcoming videos. I hope this was a bit helpful. Thanks.